Oh, thank you. Social development, agriculture, rural development, and environment, MEC Mbali Shope says government should lead from the front and understand the needs of young people. In her opinion piece, as part of commemorating World Youth Skills Day, Shope believes some challenges could be solved through collaborative efforts. The MEC joins us now to chat more um, about those views. Thank you for making time for us, um, MEC. Uh, w when you look at South Africa and how young a population we have in this country and, and as we commemorate this World Youth Skills Day, how skilled are our youth today? As you know, South Africa is a largely um, youth populated uh, country and especially in Gauteng. And unfortunately, the stats are also showing that it's the young people that are highly unemployed and lowly skilled. So we certainly need to do a lot. And that's why we believe that within our departments, which is the Department of Social Development, Agriculture, Rural Development and Environment, we need to do a lot more to raise the developmental agenda. So it's really about raising the development and social development. Because for the longest time, our department um, and social development in particular has focused and leaned more on welfare, which is fine because we really do need to take care of the vulnerable. Um, so these would be your young children, those who, who um, are sick, the elderly, and so forth. And we continue to do that work because it's in line with our legislative mandate. However, we've said that, and consciously, we want to raise the development and social development so that we are able to tackle this very shocking stats that we have that reveal that young people are largely unemployed and remain lowly still. So we really need to raise um, mm -hmm. the skills development agenda and ensuring that we're able to get as many young people to be able to be, to participate actively within the economy. Because if we don't do that, that yeah. will be the, the future adult generation that is going to be reliant on state aid. And we certainly don't want that narrative. What, what does it mean for us to have a young generation like this? How can this be used as an advantage? Look, it's a, it's a ticking time bomb if we don't do anything about it. And that's why we are intentional in ensuring that we raise the developmental agenda and push young people towards skills. Because if you think about it now, I mean, our economy right now is in the state that it's in because predominantly we have people that are dependent on, our, on the state. So whether it be through the grants and so forth, but they really are dependent on the state. And we understand the history that we come from. But in moving forward and the type of South Africa we want and how we reimagine South Africa, that agenda of skills is critical, particularly for this cohort of young people. Because if we don't do that, we'll never be able to address the current challenges that we have. They'll simply compound because it's the majority of young people that are in the state that they're in. So yeah. we need to move them to a point where they can be economically active because we can then we're able to draw a lot more um, tax yeah. base from those individuals, which means we can be able to do a lot more things and really not only focus on welfare, but also become to be innovative and see what are the different things that we need to do. Because it means we'll have more young people who will be entrepreneurial, who will be actively participating, whether it's through the various jobs that they're creating and so forth. It allows a nation to move to the, its next stage of development and not be caught up in welfare as what we are currently doing, where we have to consistently deal with the basic needs of every day when we really need to transition people to self-actualize and be able to move to the next level as a nation. Yeah. What are you doing then as the social development d department in developing these skills um, among young people? Because a lot of young people will tell you, well, we are very much able and willing to work, but there are just not a lot of opportunities for us. And you're absolutely correct. I mean, we go around every corner of the province and young people are eager. Um, and that's why we have substance abuse issues. Um, we're, and homelessness and so forth, because they just feel that there aren't a lot of opportunities. So we've been intentional um, in the province and certainly nationally the initiatives of ensuring that we, through what we call our centers of excellence, we're bringing in all forms of skills there that you may have, from soft skills in terms of those that want to seek for jobs, but also entrepreneurial and business skills that are provided. And then there's your more technical skills. So those that want to move into, agri into agriculture, we've got opportunities there. You'll know that we launched our big 6,000 campaign, which I'll speak to um, shortly, but we've, we've got agriculture, we look into construction, so we teach them brick making, um, how to lay bricks, uh, how to make a foundation, issues around welding and so forth, plumbing, etc. 
Uh, we've got those that are into the waste economy, which is another big untapped area, which doesn't require someone to have large uh, or high levels of skills. We move them into those areas. We are focusing in the various sectors where it doesn't require people to have technical expertise, but we can be able to train them. And we look, we focus certainly on the youth, but we, it's not restricted to the youth only. And like I was saying earlier, we launched the big, uh, with a campaign with the premier of the Green Army. We will move individuals into agriculture and waste management. You know, people always get shocked when I tell them that instead of relying on the 350 grants that government gives, as an example, for those that are unemployed, you've got these individuals who collect waste, and we've got tons of waste. Stats are showing that Gauteng makes the most amount of waste. They take that waste, they sell it off to individuals that we call buyback centers, and they make between 2,000 to 7,000 men. So if you're moving from 350 to 2,000 to 7,000, depending on how much waste you're able to collect, that's massive. And you can be able to graduate even within that waste economy. So you can move from being a picker to owning a buyback center and so forth and so forth, because there's various uh, skills and expertise that, are there that people can be able to graduate into. And also from an agricultural front, we're increasing on that so that people can, can know that you don't only need to farm for your own benefit in the household, but you can be able to sell that off, especially now where food insecurity is such a big factor. And of course, there's the other areas that I spoke about, such as your construction, um, plumbing, and so forth and so forth, that we we'll also look into. So it's a wealth of skills that we're looking into and how we get people into them, so that when we're talking about the skills massification, we're able to make sure that it's really something that is implemented and we've got these centers throughout our province. And we, we, we've got six currently, so we've got them through in each region and two in Joburg, mm -hmm. but we're massifying so that we have far more and we can be able to take a lot more individuals in. And how many young people are you targeting through this initiative? Look, you know, Haudang is a huge population, um, and I must indicate that we really want to make sure that we reach... So right, right, right now, um, if you look into the number that we have been able to train over the years, you look at just over 100,000 of individuals that have gone through them. We are focusing on also those that are under substance abuse, because those are the ones that we want to make sure that they're able to get off, and skills development forms a critical part of that, so that you don't just deal with taking the toxins out of them, but we must be also to deal with how do we make sure that they're able to stand up on their own and not be reliant or go back to the same patterns of substance abuse. Because um, those that are engaged in, in substances, the data does show that it's from lack of opportunities and also just boredom. So by keeping young people active, we're able to redirect that youthful exuberance into something that is meaningful. Mm -hmm. And what about the role of other stakeholders? Because when you want to... Uh, sort of make the changes you want to make and, and make as, as many opportunities um, as possible available for young people, including developing them and giving them the skills. You're going to need other stakeholders to join in. Do you have that support through these initiatives where the private sector is, is also, even civil society organizations are also helping out? It's been great, and I think because everybody understands where we are, that we simply can't leave the situation as it is. There's a great appreciation that we all need to play our part and make sure that everybody comes on board. So in terms of the support that is there, we've got CETAs on board, we've got NPOs on board, um, we've got various individuals within communities, but importantly also business. I mean, you've got big corporates that have come on board, such as your Coca-Cola, for example, in our waste management work. We've got what we call a PR, uh, PRO alliance. So these are your manufacturers of glass, of paper, and so forth, and they've come on board because they too want to uh, play their part. Because there's a, an appreciation that if we don't deal with this matter of the lack of skills and unemployment together, we're all going to be faced with a crisis. And, and as I was saying, where a nation is not able to move and transition to the next level, but will constantly be locked in a welfareism because you have to deal with the basic necessities because individuals can't be able to take care of that themselves. Mm, yeah. Well, MEC Bali Shope, uh, thank you so much for making time for us.